happening in L.A.? Visiting family. On the last season of Fritz Lords, I was making 300,000 a week. Nine years old. What are they offering? Five million. Free. I hired a girl. It's amazing. Why is it amazing? This isn't a very glamorous job. I'm not used to glamour. She's disfigured, burned in a fire on her face. <laughs> Do you know how my mother died? No. In a fire? No. People don't just enter our lives randomly. We call them. You chose to do this movie without even reading the script. I'm assuming it was because you want to work with David again. Mm. Um, can you talk a bit about why you like working with him and how your working relationship has changed, if it's changed since Cosmopolis? I like work, I like him as a person a lot. I just like hanging out with him, um, for one thing. And I like... He has a very efficient... He has a really good crew, and it's kind of... It's never stressful. It, it always seems like it's very, very focused. Um, it's just nice to go to work. Um, and he always makes good movies, and so it's kind of it's, it's helps. It's a good thing. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's really changed that much. I mean, I kind of, I've sort of been the same with him like since the first conversation. It's really weird. I, mean, I just kind of just get along with him. And I'm curious if he wrote the role with you in mind, because I mean, you're playing a limo, limo driver again. You have mm -hmm. sex in the back of the limo again. Is that all just coincidence, or did he have you in mind? Do you know? I mean, I, I th he asked me pretty early on if I wanted to do it. So, but I don't, I don't know. Or maybe he did, I don't know, I've actually never asked him. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've kind of realised that Cosmopolis is sort of my audition for this. Like, it's like, you know, just put it, it's like, yeah, that guy can work in the limo. <laughs> and um, speaking of the scene in the back of the limo, I read in an earlier interview that you had a kind of like a nervous episode during it. Can you tell us a bit about that story? Oh, uh, yeah, for some reason, I mean, it was like boiling, it was like in the summer in Toronto, absolutely boiling. And for some reason, I mean, you could see it, I mean, I'm like, for some reason, like losing like 12 pounds of sweat for some reason like this enormous sweat um like kind of like bombs <laughs> on the back of julianne's back and she's like not sweating at all for some reason i don't understand what's happening it looks like i'm having like an embolism <laughs> but um yeah that's not my it wasn't my greatest um pseudo-sex. <laughs> in this movie, obviously, it's it's pretty exaggerated, but would you say it's fairly accurate to what you see around Hollywood and, like, just the whole cult of celebrity thing? Would you say it's, you know, a somewhat accurate representation of that? Sort of. I mean, it's kind of... I've definitely met characters like a lot of the characters in it, mm -hmm. but it's not like the whole of Hollywood is like that. I mean, but there are... I don't even really know what Hollywood is particularly. I'm mean, sort of, you know, I mean... I mean, there are worse sides to it than that. Yeah, I, so, I mean, like, uh, but but really, you kind of it's it's who you choose to hang around with. I mean, but I think you could probably find the same same weirdos in like any city or any job. Yeah, and you've done a couple of really interesting films lately. This, The Rover, <clears throat> Cosmopolis. Is this a route that you're gonna you know continue heading down with your career, or would you ever go back to mainstream or franchise films like Twilight? Yeah, I mean. To be honest, I kind of always look at Twilight as being kind of weirder than <laughs> the majority of stuff I'm doing. I mean, it's like, especially to kind of make, you know, such a kind of very specific and intense story about, uh, like, a very, very specific subject, I and mean, then stretch it out for five movies as well. I mean, it, it inevitably gets these kind of strange elements to it. Um, well, yeah, I can't really tell the difference between mainstream and and not mainstream movies, other than the fact that no one goes to see <laughs> non-mainstream movies. <laughs> so for your next few projects, do you think you're going to be doing more, you know, non-mainstream stuff like this, or, like, off-the-beaten-path stuff, or...? Yeah, I mean, like, I guess this and the Rover were kind of, uh, sort of art-housey, kind of, yeah. a little bit. Um, I'm doing this movie called Idol's Eye, which is just kind of, I mean... I guess a little bit because of the director, kind of quite academic movie as well. But I mean, it's sort of, but it's like a gangster movie as well. So I mean, I don't know. I really can't tell. I mean, I guess it's up to the audience to decide if it's mainstream or not. I'm alive and I'm not crazy. On the stairs of death, I write your name, Liberty. <laughs>